A very good evening, good morning, good afternoon to you, depending on where you are watching us from. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswanza, and you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact Series, proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network, where we are influencing the next generation of Africans and the next generation of young people living worldwide. Today is going to be a wonderful day, and I'm sure you're going to love what we're going to discuss here, and I am glad to have in the studio the wonderful person who's going to take up this topic. But before we do that, I'm going to say, get into the chat area. Let us know where you are joining us from. Let us feel the energy and the vibe in the house and share this page, share the link. Let others also join us to learn from what we're going to do today. But as I say, just get to the chat area. Let me know who is in the house with me today, who is online with me today. Let us know where you are connecting from and let's keep vibing and let's keep chatting. And as we're doing that, you keep your questions also coming in. But before we do that, let us start by going through our main breaks. Welcome to the Power Impact Series, and today it's all about health. We're talking good health and then keeping a good health. So in the studio with us today is a wonderful person that you want to hear and listen to was he shared with us what he has for us today. Um, the month of November will be dedicated mostly for health um, issues and then health topics. So let's get ready and looking at our health. Right. Our guest today is a public health practitioner. Our guest is an author, and then our guest is a thinker of thoughts. Our guest will show about himself, and you're going to love to listen to our guest today. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time on the Power Impact series, it's a young gentleman that you love to hear and hear again. Ladies, with a round of applause, help me welcome. Dr. Rudolf Mesa. Hello, Doc. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. It's going to be good in here. Yes, yeah, so we'll get yes. into the chat yes. area. Yes. Let's know where you are connecting from. Let us know where you are joining us from. And then let's share the page. Let others also come in there. Rah, rah, rah. We are here with Dr. Mesa. Wow, wow. Doctor. I just did a little bit about you, but since you were here, <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> we want to know more about you. So if you could tell us more about yourself, we're going to be very, very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I really hope that I would make today um, conversational and less academic or uh, medical and all those things. <laughs> we will try as much as possible to do that. But um, like you mentioned, I am interested in public health. I did uh, an MPhil after my some years of practice in the area of diabetes. And so that is uh, something that is of concern to me, what we call NCDs and non-communicable diseases, which is becoming quite prevalent in Africa and in most African countries. So I've practiced, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I've left practice for some time. I'm currently working as a technical officer at the Ministry of Health Ghana. And plus a few other things. I do radio head talk show on a Sampaya FM in Ghana, plus a few other things. But I also write. And uh, like you mentioned, I'm a thinker of thought. I say that because uh, we have uh, very few people these days take their time to think. And thinking is a very hard job to do. And so I, I often try to retreat and go into lonely spaces. What some people call meditation, some people call calmness, yoga. You have different names for it, but I call it thinking. And so I try to I try to do that quite often during my time. But uh, I hope that today I will share as well as learn from, from this platform and from the comment that we are going to get. And like I mentioned, I will try as much as possible to make this very conversational. 
and not filled with medical jargons or uh, terminology so that we get to know what we are talking about. Yeah, not to be filled with medical terminologies, as we would say, not not medical jargons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that uh, most people say, um, all doctors are calm and then uh, they are good with their writing until they become fully, I mean, medical doctors, <laughs> and then you can't even read their handwritings again. What, what accounts to that? <laughs> So, you know, there, there, there are volumes and volumes of things you have to study. And uh, there's a theory that the mind goes faster than the hand. And so, for instance, I want to write um, Amodiaquin or I want to write any of these drugs for you. In my mind, I've already said it, but my hand has to take time to write the forward. And I don't have that time. And so I have to find a way to, you know, speed up my handwriting because my mind had already written the prescription. And that's how come, like, if you allow me to write at a normal pace, our handwriting are different. But in a consulting room, when I have to write something on a note, but I can't have the time, the luxury of time in emergency situations to write P A R A paracetamol. No, no, no. I can just write one P, and the rest will be some lines behind it. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was a course of study <laughs> oh no it's, 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 yeah. because, no, you get all doctors doing that they'll just do some scribbling and, and the funny thing is when you get to the pharmaceutical shop I mean, they are able to read that and you're like yes hey, well, you are in the same class <laughs> <laughs> right right so we, we, we get it now we get it now yeah, yeah. So, so the next time you go to the the doctor and the doctor writes those things don't be scared <laughs> no 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 it's, don't just be get scared the pharmaceutical <laughs> And, and the good thing is they get you the right medicine as well so yes they they know they are smart way smarter you know the pharmacies are way smarter because they know the drugs they know what what you've written and they they have more understanding of how the drugs work some people can even come back to you and say doc you should have given this dosage to this person but you made a mistake on it correct it and so that work is, is teamwork you need all the the smart people in there the pharmacies the med lab people the doctors the nurses the midwives I always try to make people understand it's not all about the doctor. When you go to the hospital, it's not all about the doctor. The lab person who is taking your blood and testing for you is as important as the doctor who is telling you what is wrong with you. Right, right, right. So everyone is important. Yeah, not only one person. So it's kind of a, a network work that they are doing there. So you don't have one person doing more than the other. We all come together yes. for your help. And that's the reason why the Power Impact Series today is here with Dr. Mensah. We're coming together for your health, and we're going to talk about your health, and then uh, we'll pick it from there. You are an author. How many books have you written, or is it an article that I've written so that we can I have... read more about it? <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I think I have seven books now. Oh, wow. Uh, they are yeah. all written, they are all written in a normal way, so we can read. Yes, <laughs> yes, all written. That is some, I think all of them are available on Amazon. What okay. she can have access to, okay. and and um, I have one academic book, okay. uh, that is not nonfiction. The seven books are nonfiction books that I've written. I have one academic book. I have about two or three research papers or articles online. But basically, I I, I haven't written in quite some time. Maybe I would have to get back to it after this series. <laughs> you definitely need to. We go. You ready to read? We ready yeah. to read more about it. Yeah, let me give some shout out to those that have joined us and they are giving us some comments. So I have here Ambassador Prince Kodio Hilton. Yeah, he says, watching live from Ablekuma Agape. I have in here Rebecca Adriaco. She says, watching from Accra, Ghana. I have here Yao Setre Nuama says, watching you live from Gomwa a France. Move him to the super host and the finest MC ever met. Ben, I am enjoying the program. Thank you so much. Let your comments start coming in because we're going to fly now. If you're mm. joining us, you are joining the Power Impact series where today we're talking marvelously about something important that you're going to love to hear and hear over again with Dr. Rudolf Mercer. He is a thinker of thoughts, a doctor, an author, and a health practitioner. And then, yeah, yeah. Just a few minutes ago, he shared with us all that is on his mind and who he is. And he's actually explained why you get doctors writing in some beautiful ways. <laughs> <laughs> right. Their mind thinks faster than their hands do the writing. So today, we're going to listen to him and then go hear him on what he's saying. I have here, I love Sarah Leon. He says, watching from Maryland, USA. 
thanks for today's show thank you for coming steve gates say watching you all the way from south africa thank you all Excellent. let it come let it keep coming <clears throat> our public health matters so this is a great show already that is it we need to take it off right let's see the topic for today managing type 2 diabetes but before that <laughs> what is diabetes and why do you have type 1 type 2 how many times do you even have <laughs> recently we even discovered that the third type of diabetes oh but... there we go there we go <laughs> a we, <third> we... Type. <laughs> we came to know that there was a combination of the one and two in a way but but we have the two main types just that the description keeps evolving as we learn more and more about it so like i promised from the beginning this is going to be conversational and and mostly for most of our local dialects i don't know the, the number of people from ghana from other african places when we say diabetes in ghana we call it uh, a situated area which right. which basically means that uh, uh sugar disease <laughs> so <laughs> so our basic understanding for most african people is that diabetes means that there is too much sugar in your blood okay. that is our basic understanding but that is wrong and that is how come most of us suffer from it we have the type 1 diabetes which basically let's let me do a little bit of anatomy we have something inside your body called the pancreas this organ produces a hormone called insulin right. the job of the insulin is when you eat any carbohydrate products you know the end product of carbohydrates is um glucose if you did some basic science in junior high school you should know this this is not big well, I'm terminology science student. Please get on board. you did science in the senior yes. high school get on board here let's answer this question <laughs> Uh, the, so let leave the comment. What is the end product of uh, digestion of carbohydrates in the body? What is the end product? Put it in the comment. Let's see those who remember their science. And so the glucose is basically sugar. We have different forms of sugar: glucose, sucrose, lactose, like all forms of sugar. But the glucose that goes into the body, you need the insulin to open up your body cells to take it up, give you the energy to work. So in the case of type one diabetes, the pancreas has a problem. So it is not able to produce the insulin that the body needs to work. What means that in that case, you can eat a ton of food, but then you feel like you are still hungry. And then you 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 don't have, uh, the, the body is not taking up the, the energy to work. And so that those people, the first symptom that we see is that they eat, but they are never satisfied. They, we call it polyphagia. So they eat and then they, feel, they still feel hungry. They are eating very well, but they are facing, they are losing weight unexplained. Even though they are eating, they are still losing weight. It's because the body is not able to take it. And that is because the pancreas is not producing in insulin at all. And so that is the problem with type 1 diabetes. But when we come to the type 2 diabetes, there are two issues. Either the pancreas is not producing enough insulin or the pancreas is producing insulin, but the body cannot recognize it. So in some cases, there are people who are, let me use the word, overweight. And so they have a lot of fat tissues around their cells. So even though the pancreas is producing insulin, there are other conditions that causes this, but the body becomes insensitive to the, the insulin that is being produced by the pancreas. And in that way, it becomes difficult for the body to pick up the energy that is being produced from the food. And so when it comes to type 1 diabetes, it is, let me say, irreversible because once once you have that issue with your pancreas unless you are replacing it because you need an insulin that is why those people have to be on insulin injection so if you know somebody who has diabetes who is injecting insulin every day that is type one because in that situation the body is not able to produce insulin naturally and so you have to give it the artificial the manufactured one to keep your body going if not you can't function and so it is a very serious disease. Most people don't even pay attention to it, but diabetes is more serious than even COVID or any other thing you face. Apart from the fact that COVID was an infectious and emergency condition, diabetes is a chronic long-term serious disease. And it happens because usually we know there's a family history to it. So if your father, your mom, your, your auntie, or somebody in your, your first line of history in your family had had diabetes, there's a likelihood that you may develop the same condition. And so that is type one. And I, I will focus on type two because 
the type one, like I mentioned, is mostly reversible. You can't do much about it except manage it. But with the proper combination of diet, drugs, exercise, you can reverse type two diabetes. Okay. You can actually change your type two diabetes to normal. And that is why I want us to focus on that this evening. So that if someone has type two diabetes, this is the case where you, your body is not producing um, enough insulin or the body is producing insulin, but the, the cells are not recognizing it. What can you do? What should you do to be able to solve this problem? I had a friend who lost a mom to diabetes. They had a funeral just over the weekend and it was, it was terrible. And so it is very important for us to understand that. I want people to get this. I, I know I'm coming up against an established uh, medical system and I have been in it where they want to put you on drugs for for months for years and they tell you that diabetes has no cure you just have to take your drugs until you die if it's type 1 diabetes medically yes but if it is type 2 diabetes i can assure you that you can reverse your type 2 diabetes you just need to get the right information when it comes to your diet your exercise your drugs you have to take and what you have to do to meet this criteria so that is the that is what i will leave uh, i will let out of the bag like Type 2 diabetes is when you have not enough insulin production from your pancreas or the insulin is not being recognized by your body. But that is not the death sentence. You can reverse your type 2 diabetes. Wow, you can reverse your type 2 diabetes. So type 2 means what? <laughs> your pancreas is not being able to produce more insulin. Yes or the one that is being produced is not being able to be absorbed by the to body. be used yes excellent right. All right. so you're um, a very good student uh what's the science student doing? <laughs> it should be easier for you <laughs> hey where are my science students <laughs> and then i have ambassador joining me ambassador is online he's a visual art student so he's going to draw the pancreas for us don't worry uh <laughs> good 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 <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> The type one, yes, is the type one. Does it mean the type one, the pancreas is not also being able to produce the insulin, or it is producing it, but still is not being absorbed so well by the body. That's why that one medically, it's a no no to I mean, recovery. Oh, okay. So, like I mentioned, the in the past we used to describe it as a. Uh, what do you call it? We used to describe diabetes as whether um, children onset or adult onset. We refer to type 2 diabetes as adult onset because you see it when you are older. And this is usually by your own actions. What you eat, what you eat, what you drink, the time you eat. So I'll come to that. But the type 2 is you are born with it because it is something that is familiar. It is from a family history. Your mom sorry your dad has a condition so people have uh what do we call congenital conditions with their pancreas maybe uh, there is pancreatic cancer there is uh, some pancreatic dysfunction where the the beta cells sorry i, I promise i wasn't going to do that of that, but <laughs> <laughs> the pancreas contains beta cells which produces the insulin and there is a problem with that and so this happens when when we are young i had a six year old girl who, who died from, from diabetes, from type 1 diabetes, because the parent couldn't afford insulin. You get it? And so it was it was more of a... Uh, insulin is quite expensive. I, I, I really want to make a comment on it. I don't know from what country you are watching from, but I want to know how much you are buying insulin over there. I know people are paying $60 up to $100 in the U.S., uh, Yes, for, for a vial of insulin. Some places are doing that. And how, there are places how, where... How long are you... How how often are you injecting it? Or how often are you using it? It's for life. It's, it's, a, it's a chronic condition. And that is why I mentioned that, you know, there is a whole... Um, what do you call it? The pharmaceutical line of production for drugs for these things. And so when you talk a lot of prevention that is not a popular topic we want to talk about treatment because that's where the money is <laughs> if i treat you as a doctor that's where the money is but if i'm telling you how to stop the disease from coming then i don't get anything from that so basically people like us who do public health preventive medicine we're not really that popular but that's just by the way i'm just joking and so the point is that if you have type 1 diabetes 
your pancreas is not producing insulin at all. Okay. And so you need to inject the insulin from the, the, the one they give you. In Ghana, it, it goes under um, there's a sponsorship. I think there was a there's a Ghana Diabetes Association. I know there's an insurance that helps you to cover your drugs that you get for diabetes. And so when you are diagnosed with diabetes, the insulin you get comes to you. I think it's given to you for free when you go to the designated center. Okay. Because someone is paying for it. But then I know there are other states in the U.S., other countries, uh, places where the insulin is not free. You have to buy it. And so you imagine a six-year-old girl whose parents are earning, let me use dollar, who, whose parents are earning maybe le are living on less than $100 a month. It happens in most African countries. How are they able to afford insulin? So it is a terrible condition. It's, it's very terrible. And uh, that type 1 comes with lots of complications. Men, especially, would even suffer uh, what we call stroke. They can suffer stroke from di type 1 diabetes. They can suffer impotence from diabetes. Okay. They can suffer neuro neuropathies like their legs feel numb. I once had a man, a 54-year-old man who was a, um, he was a mason. He works at building construction sites. And um, he came to me and his leg was swollen. I tried to find what the problem was. I realized that there was a nail in his leg. He had stepped on a nail at the side, and so his left leg was swollen, and but he didn't know what was happening. He couldn't feel the pain because he was diabetic. Oh, okay. So that is how come people get amputation, because they don't feel, feel pain when they step on sharp objects. And so their legs will be um, swollen, rotten, and they don't feel any pain unless you cut off the, the leg. And so it is, it is a very bad condition. So for type 1, the person is not producing insulin. That is how come you need to inject the, the insulin you need to, to keep going. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining us, we're talking about managing type 2 diabetes. And then uh, doctor has taken us through. <laughs> it's getting to me now. <laughs> I, I, yes, I hope I get to scare a few people to take yes. action. <laughs> It's necessary. It's necessary. We need to create that awareness, and then so that we we kind of focus our mindset to it. Because as you're saying, once this gentleman went to step on the nail, he, I mean, on the nail, he, he was in that way. Some of these things do happen. You might have it, but you don't know you're having it until yes. it escalates to the highest point where amputation needs to come in, and we don't want that to happen now. That's why we are doing this whole thing. So now, just as you said earlier, so. Yes. What health problems does it cause? The, the complications of diabetes quite happens. The problem is that about eight out of 10 people with diabetes don't know they have diabetes. That's it. And by the time they get to know, they've already been like five years into the disease. Wow. And so they are getting, yes, they, late diagnosis is a problem for diabetes. It will cost, let's say, about um, 10 cities, let's say a dollar in Ghana to check your, your blood sugar. Okay. I don't know how much it costs in other countries. I would love to know. So right. most people under normal circumstances wouldn't go to the hospital and say, I want to check my blood sugar. They don't do that. I don't know how many of us here will know our blood sugar. Just leave it in the comments if you know or the last time you checked your blood sugar. <laughs> Let's let, let it come, let it come, let it come. <laughs> Let's feel your blood sugar if you know your blood sugar levels, right? Do you, are you aware of, yes, the level of your blood sugar? Or when was the last time you walked in, into any lab, any hospital, any health center and said, you know what, check, do a thorough checkup. Look at my blood, tell me what is wrong with me. Is there any infection? Is there any, check my sugar level, uh, fasting blood sugar level and all of that. We don't do that. And in most places in Africa, we have a poor health seeking habit where we want to wait until the thing get worse before we go to the hospital. And so that is very bad. And if that happens five years into the situation, you are now going to check your diabetes. Your body has already started deteriorating because of the condition. And so for most people, um, when we say that they have a type one diabetes or even just diabetes in general, they can develop what we call nephropathy. Right. It affects their kidneys. And so they can even develop kidney diseases. Most kidney failure we see these days results from diabetes. 
So it's interconnected. Enough. It is interconnected. It is. And so there are people who have eye problems. About 10% of blindness in Africa is as a result of diabetes. It can blind you because there is too much sugar now stays in the blood. The blood goes into circulation and now goes into your eyes and you start getting what we call blood vision. And so you start getting blood vision is one of the symptoms of diabetes. People like you don't see well and they'll never go to the hospital to check what's wrong with them. By the time you realize your eyes are all gone from diabetes. And I already mentioned that it can make men impotent. Yeah. Diabetes can make men impotent. Erectile dysfunction is also a popular complication. It can result in amputation, like I mentioned, because it makes your legs numb and you don't feel anything. And so you get infections and when you get infections or you get any wound, it doesn't heal faster. Right. Your wound can persist for months because of the diabetes. So these are all serious complications. Stroke is another complication of diabetes. Hypertension and diabetes can come together to cause havoc in your system. Now, it goes together with people who are obese. You know, uh, I want to say, I don't want to say uh, fat, but like obese people or overweight. It is a problem also. And so these are all like common complications that people get from um, from diabetes. And that is why it is important. I think this is a, a very important topic. I don't know if I already mentioned this month of November, worldwide, globally, is, is, is a diabetes awareness month. Wow. wow. Yes. Wow. So we, we really chose the right topic for today's discussion. <laughs> we are saying, yeah, thank you for joining us. Yeah. I have some questions already coming up, but we will hold on okay. to that. So, uh, okay, um, Priesthood Bridge says it's watching us live from Texas. Yeah, all right, thank you so much for joining us. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already getting heated up here because of this. So, so before we even go to the prevention and all that stuff, what are some of the things that will cause us to willingly and constantly visit the hospital for this kind of checks? Because, I mean, as you just said. Five years down the lane before you're going to know, yeah. before it's going to be detected that you have it. By that time, it has eaten a lot of things. It has gotten into you deeper. And then the next resort will be an amputation. What will be some of the lifestyle or some of the things that will cause us to constantly do this check? Blood sugar level. I'm still waiting for it from the comments, but I'm not seeing anything. So you can, yeah, you can see that. What you just said. <laughs> <laughs> it means what you said is real. Okay, so what will cause somebody to constantly do this, to just walk into the hospital or walk in and say, I'm coming to check what will cause somebody to constantly do that? Right. Um, there are two things that I have realized from my practice. First of all, is the, it has to do with the, the health personnel. Most people don't can't walk into the hospital and do these checks because they feel like um, they will be harassed, they will be asked a lot of questions. Uh, I have to go and join a long queue and I don't have time. I have to go to work, the traffic. And it is not really welcoming in, in most of our hospitals or health centers for people to just walk in. And even right. in the places where they have pharmacies or other um, lab testing places, most people think private labs are expensive, you know, <laughs> uh, especially in these times of economic uh, difficulties <laughs> in most African countries. People rather choose to yeah. buy a bowl of rice than to go and check their blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> but this is oh, not no. to tell the situation we are in. That is a rare life practical like choice. The same way if you go to some Western countries, people would have to choose between paying for rent or, or buying insulin. I've had real life situations where someone has to choose, someone who is earning maybe um, $20 an hour and a four hour job and has to buy a $60 vial of insulin every week. You know, it's it's tough decision for these people. And so just going to check alone is, is one important thing. Like I mentioned, it's not that expensive, especially in Ghana. You have NGOs and other places, so other African countries who subsidize the WHO, UNICEF, uh, other programs are there where there are subsidies to these things. And so if you don't know your blood sugar, I am charging you this week, Please, tomorrow morning, when you wake up in the morning, write it on your to-do list. I need to check my blood sugar. I need to check my blood sugar. Walk into any lab, walk into any hospital. Just that um, you are not here for anything. You are not here to, to come to see any doctor. Any You are here to check your blood sugar. 
talk to the nurse in charge. You don't maybe if you go and join the queue, you may be kept. At, just talk to anyone. You check your blood sugar. You get your value. This is what you got. I don't know, but even if you want to talk to me, fine. After the program, you can always read through my social media handles. Let's discuss your lab results because it's important to me. Early diagnosis can prevent all this impotence, stroke, kidney failure, kidney infections, and all this um, blindness that even comes with, with, with complications of diabetes. So, and the other end is that apart from the fact that most um, health centers or hospitals are not opening their arm to receive, we don't, we don't have a lot of wellness centers in, in Africa. Right. You know, like not hospitals. People, it, it doesn't have to be when I'm sick. It has right. to be, it has to be, I, I'm not sick, but I've come. Can you just look at my liver? Look at my kidney. Is that something right. wrong? Is there something going wrong? Most of us have lived for like 25 years. We've never done a liver function test. It's, it's like you've been driving a car for 25 years. You've never checked the engine. You've never checked the oil, but you are driving it, hoping that yeah. nothing happens to the car. And so, yeah, it's it very sad these days when you, you see a 28-year-old young man and has kidney failure and they are trying to raise funds online through GoFundMe to support a kidney transplant or something. Right. So if they, that person is consciously seeking good health behaviors, he would have diagnosed the condition earlier and wouldn't have to need emergency surgery for that. Right. As I always talk about it, it's either you spend money now, some little money now, so mm -hmm. you are aware of your heart state or than to wait until the situation gets worse, and then you have to spend more. And so, yes, we all understand that you'd rather spend the money on rent, on food, or on other things, but you can spend, you can maybe every six months of, of the year, you can spend a hundred dollars to do a thorough checkup, which is like a thousand cities, like every six months. If you put aside 50 cities, 100 cities, I'm quoting in cities because I'm starting from Ghana, so forgive me. I try to uh, convert it to dollars or to other African country currencies. But even if you save $10 a month, you can have enough to do a thorough checkup at the end of the year. So when people set New Year resolutions, I always say they forget about their health. I want to go here, I want to travel to Kenya, I want to go and see the safari in South Africa, I want to go to Ghana and see the castles. You know, I'm inviting all of you to come to Ghana to the same, but yes, I'm, I'm coming from my country. I want to go to the US, to Tennessee. I've seen someone uh, watching us live from, from there. I've seen, so like, but you don't write to anything concerning your health. Like, I want to check my liver. I want to check my kidney. I want yeah. to do an ECG. How is my heart operating? Imagine your heart started beating in your mother's womb and it hadn't stopped. But have you checked it any day of your life to make sure it is in good condition? <laughs> it is working. <laughs> it is working. So you don't even check it. That's, that's our problem. Until one day, someone gets a cardiac arrest and we will say, oh, he was just fine. He was just here. Yeah. How come he fell down and died? Because you are not checking your heart. You, are not, you don't even pay attention to it. And once it's beaten in your chest, you think that's all. But the most important thing I want to say is that don't be stopped because, like, let's say, oh, the, the health personnel are not friendly, they are not welcoming, we don't have wellness centers, it's expensive. Please make the sacrifice. Check your blood sugar. Just start with that. It doesn't cost much. What, let's throw this challenge out there. Go to any lab, any hospital, and just tell them that you were watching the Impact Series, the Power Impact Series yeah. on the African Speakers Network, and you were challenged that on the 7th of November 2022, everyone should check their blood sugar. That's and you right. did. <laughs> to do that. Right, right. You, you dare to do that. Wow. This is wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying myself and I'm learning a lot. Ah, a Kelly Hope says, love this program. I mean, we love right. it because this is enough information for us. Um, okay, let me just move in here and then probably it will take us to. So it's the sugar. Is it what type of sugar? Is it the kind of sugar we're eating in that is increasing the sugar level of our blood, or it's another kind of um, conversion after eating something that is turning the sugar that is increasing the levels in our blood? Which which of them are we looking at, or which of the sugars are we talking about? Okay, 
or the excellence. I think I will use this to talk about the, the, the management and prevention. You know, most often we focus on like it's an excellent question. There are types of you are science students, that's why. There are types of <laughs> there are types of sugars, and most people confuse every sugar. And it's interesting to know that these days you find sugar in the most unsuspecting products. I saw one um ketchup which had sugar in it. You know, so you may think that you are not eating sugar. But as you spring in the ketchup on your fries and your, uh, I don't want to mention any brand, but your, your chicken and all those things that, that you eat, you, you, you realize that you are going to be getting all this sugar. And so the sugar we are talking about, we have the table sugar, which is the sucrose, right. the one that you put into your tea, your, your coffee, your, your cocoa, your porridge, uh, or the, the things that the beverages you take, like the one that the white sugar you put in there is what okay. we call the table sugar that takes a lot of time to be absorbed and it easily stays in the bloodstream and so if you're somebody who has any history of diabetes i am begging you to cut out sugar so why we eat try as much as possible yes try as much as possible to cut out table sugar especially though that you, some people want to feel the sugar on their taste but like your tongue before they eat if there's no sugar they can't eat anything with that sugar I know someone who would put sugar in Milo. Ah, Milo yeah, yeah, yeah. has some sugar in there already. So why do they have to put sugar? Into <laughs> if if so, doctor is talking to you, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have some corporates in there. They have they want to put a spoon of sugar into Milo. So they take three spoons of Milo and one spoon of sugar, and then they'll add milk and they'll add um, I don't yes some powder into it to make it you know thick they want to eat yeah. thick and then they'll fry some eggs with some please when it comes to your diet it's very very important so for sugar i'll just give you this challenge for one week for this week don't eat any form of sugar and see how best it will boost your energy like see how how energetic you would be see um how it will change you will feel a change in your body personally you can try that you know cut out any sugar so we have that table sugar number one and number two, we have the, the fructose, the sugar that comes from fruits. But that sugar is not as, in quotes, dangerous like the table sugar. So if you want to eat watermelon, if you want to eat banana, if you want to eat pineapple, if you want to eat uh, guava, apple, they also contain some amount of fructose. But those are very, very okay to eat them. And so I always advise people, instead of eating... Uh, if you feel like drinking any, uh, let me use fizzy drink. I, I want to try as much as possible not to mention any brand <laughs> that we, we, we are popular with. I was always going to mention that popular brand, but I stopped. <laughs> so if you, have, if you feel like some people in the afternoon, they feel like, let me open one, you know, that, that fizzy drink, any drink that has yeah. a gas in there, yeah. please avoid it. Please and please again for one week, don't drink uh, less soda more water okay you can tweet this you can put it on facebook less soda more water just drink water when you feel like drinking that sweet drink whenever you feel like drinking that sweet drink that you always drink please get a bottle of water instead or get a sachet of water i think now is a 50 percent but that's fine get a sachet of water instead of buying the bottle of that sweet drink you know so more water less soda that's very important. And then we have sugar that comes from this product, like I mentioned. These days, they are putting sugar into everything. Yeah. Mayonnaise, uh, ketchups. So when you pick any product, please read the label. When you pick any product, any drink, soft drink, please read the label. Make sure that the sugar content there is appropriate for you. So just read the label and make sure you are not taking in much more than much more sugar than you need. That's number two. Number three, and then we have we have something uh, we call the diet itself. What is a lot of carbohydrates or a lot of uh, protein? There are different kinds of diet. The keto diet. I don't want to get into that for today. Maybe you have a nutritionist come and do that. But what I always advise people is that when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, like I mentioned from the beginning, it breaks down to glucose. And so if you have to eat uh, a bowl of jollof rice, which by the way, Ghana's own is the best. If you want to eat a bowl of jollof rice, for instance, and you have 
one egg or just one small piece of fish it means you are consuming much more carbohydrates than the protein the body would store the carbohydrates uh, as glycogen into in the liver you store that so it's a very it's very easy to be converted to the glucose which stays in the blood and so try as much as possible to eat a very well balanced a very balanced diet doesn't mean that you have to eat a lot of fish no but have enough protein and less of the carbohydrates and make sure you take food servings throughout the day so for instance if you think um any 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 uh breakfast let's say oats with bread that's that's enough carbohydrates in within the afternoon time you need to get some apple or watermelon slices and i know i'm saying this then people will think oh they are expensive oh i'll get hungry again you have to take care of yourself this is not about you get hungry <laughs> again or get expensive the 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 banku you will buy you can convert the banku to one watermelon and yeah, it will yeah. fill your stomach and it will make you healthier. And so that diet, you have to make sure you are not taking a lot of sugar. The sugar is the most important thing. Like I mentioned, the food sugar is it, it is not that dangerous as compared to the table sugar, the one we are putting into the porridge, into the oats, into the milo, and all of that. And then look at the product you are buying yourself, the soft drinks. That's also a danger. And, and read the label so you know how much sugar is in there, how much salt is in there how much preservatives, how much color, how much sweetness. Some people have sugar in there, they add sweetness to it. <laughs> a lot of products online this day, they will see sweetener, color, and then they'll read it. Don't just buy it, check the expired date and then read the label and see the, the, the constituents as well. From there, the next preventive step is exercise. We are getting lazier by the day, and I'm not missing words. The sedentary lifestyle is getting worse, you know, because of technology and advancement you, you you take a ride you order for an uber you drive your car you get into a, a we are not running we are not jogging and especially in africa where our diets used to be laborious you know i don't know how many of you here used to pound fufu and other stuff in your house these are there's a machine for it there is there is a machine out there for it and and so a lot of things that were manual have been automated which has taken away the activity that comes with life and work and all of that and so it's very easy to be lazy these days i i walked up the stairs three months ago at the office and i was panting because i always use the, the elevator and so i told myself for the past three months i'm never going to use the elevator i will intentionally use the staircase so I could get some exercise and it's, if you don't make the conscious effort, it's easy. I get to the first floor, it's an eight story burden. So I get to the first floor, elevator to the top, elevator to the top. And I've been doing that almost a year without realizing what I was doing to my body. And so even though I see that I'm not putting on weights, I'm controlling my weight, but I didn't have enough stamina. And so for the past three months, I changed my routine, use the staircase, no more elevator. And so you can also challenge yourself if it is at your workplace, go for a jog, run, do any form of exercise, but make sure that you're exercising. Exercise can help you to make the insulin more sensitive. Okay. So if you have type 2 diabetes where you're having issues with the sensitivity, exercising has been proven to improve the insulin sensitivity in your body, especially if you need to lose some weight to help you do that. Please exercise. It's very, very important. It's very, very So your diet your exercise and in a situation whereby you've been given a diagnosis you can go on a drug which will help you lower the blood sugar whilst you work on it you have several drugs i don't want people to self medicate so i wouldn't mention any of them but there are drugs even over the counter which can reduce your blood sugar while you work exercise and check your diet because it won't happen overnight but like i mentioned you need you need to be conscious about your diet your exercise and then Talk to a professional. Don't put it in your mind, especially that, oh, diabetes is a chronic condition. Is it like you have to live with this for life? No, you can reverse your type 2 diabetes. You just have to pay attention to your diet, the, the exercise, and your drugs, and get the right information. It, it, you can change that. Get the right information, and you can change that. Mama got Chelsea Akushika says, very educated product. Well done, Ben and Doc. Thank you so much, Mama Ga. And then I could, uh, a folk Achilles come back to say, Doc, please, thanks for such a powerful talk. Right. So I, I, I just saw Dr. Combining how to manage type 2 diabetes together with preventing it in his last 
speak so i wouldn't go there again but i have a question in here for you from steven from uh steve biogeeks from south africa mm -hmm. he says that my mom has diabetes and normally gets amnesia right so um my yeah. question here is yeah what type does she have say she has diabetes and normally gets amnesia i mean it's your time you know yeah steve thank you for giving us some jargons in there we have wanted to prevent jargons so. <laughs> but thank you for bringing it so he wants to know what type of um, diabetes the mom has thank you yeah i'm so sorry about the amnesia it's it's a it's not a really good thing for especially a parent to be getting amnesia they can forget you and so imagine you've been a child standing in front of your parents and you're asking who are you it's 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 very bad so um steve i hope that she gets the needed help but it can be managed just make sure that you are spending uh, the last years with them uh, not trying to remind them every time just just go with the flow and i hope that you can get all the support you need but i will need to ask a few more questions to be able to tell you what type when did she get a diabetes did she get it has she been with a diabetes all her life or she got it later in life if she got it later in life there's a higher possibility that it is type 2 diabetes because that is adult onset but if she was born with it or she got it while she was young six years abroad then it's, there's a likelihood that it's type 1 especially if anyone else in the family also has diabetes that's her auntie her mom your grandma anyone has it then it is type 1. so this is also a question to you steve you have to check your blood sugar because your mom is suffering from diabetes, there's a likelihood that you can also suffer. So there's a term you say that genetics load the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. Wow. Genetics <laughs> loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. What it means is that you can't be born with the genetics to develop diabetes, but it is your choice in the environment where you are. So that will determine whether you will get it or not so the fact that maybe your family member has diabetes doesn't mean you will automatically get it and for instance let's say someone has been born with the genetics to be um, to gain weight but a person has been born into a country where there is famine would a person gain weight uh, <laughs> what is it because there is no environment to pull the trigger right. and so you could be born with a genetics to gain weight but if you start eating late, if you start eating heavy fatty food, uh, beggar here, uh, soft drink there, you are pulling the trigger on yourself. And so if you have any family member or the genetically you've been predisposed to some condition, you still have the power of choice to try to control your diet, your exercise, so that you don't fall um, a victim of what is what is happening to you. Yeah. Right. So you don't fall a victim of what is happening to you. Genetics loads the gun, but your environment pulls the trigger. Right, right. that's fine. No wonder he is a thinker of thoughts. And uh, he, has, <laughs> he has just done it so heavily for us. Yeah, from a Fuad Chunebua Kodia, it says, great insight. And then Bob Baden says, very, very insightful. And then Steven says, thanks, you dog. I think he, he asked the question. He said, thank you, dog. The one who okay. asked the question. Right. So, um, Okay, Bob says, uh, is it that sugar is solely the cause of diabetes? <laughs> mm. I know someone who doesn't like sugary stuff, but is diabetic. Can I get some clarification? In there? Right. So, Bob, I think uh, I made this comment from the beginning that, especially in our local diet in Ghana, we call diabetes a citrate area, which means sugar disease. And so most people think that diabetes is caused by sugar. No, it is not the sugar that causes the diabetes. There are people who have type 1 diabetes because their pancreas is not producing insulin at all. And so when they eat any form of sugar, whether from their banku, their fufu, their rice, their yam, their cassava, the sugar stays in the blood. It is not able to be absorbed. And so the, the person you know doesn't like sugar products, but it's diabetic is because the person may be having pancreatic or uh, insulin deficiency. So it doesn't have, sorry, it doesn't have to do with the lack of uh, the, the, the not eating sugar. And, but there's another form where a type two, what is dependent on how much sugar you are taking in, and if there's not enough insulin to process it, then it stays in the blood. And so the person you are talking about 
may be suffering from type 1 diabetes or other form of metabolic condition where there is there is no uh, enough insulin or the pancreas is not producing insulin at all so yes you may not be eating sugar but like i also mentioned there are, there are times that you think you're not eating sugar because you're not eating white sugar but you are drinking soft drinks you are you are eating a lot of yam uh, uh, with less protein you are not eating a lot of enough food you are not exercising you are not checking the time you eat although you are not eating direct white sugar there, are, there is sugar in almost everything we eat in almost everything where there is sugar and so it may be accumulating from those things but most most importantly most often if the person is not eating sugar products and is having diabetes there's a cause for concern that the, the pancreas is either not producing insulin at all or not producing enough insulin so it's important for you to do um a test it's important for you to do a, a proper test to to know i'm sorry i'll be with you it's important for you to do uh, a proper test to know what is what is going on aside of checking the blood sugar we also have something we call hb1ac what is also a test that um lets you know how your body is responding the, to the sugar and that's why i said uh, you can start with a blood sugar test but one is talk to any doctor there is a further test to help you see what the problem may actually be but it is not about you eating sugar or not Diabetes is not even about the sugar. It's not the sugar that causes it. It has to do with your pancreas and the insulin it produces or not. Wow. This is wonderful. I am just loving whatever the doctor has said to us today. And then you can keep your questions coming in because uh, right after this commercial break, uh, he's going to give us his last words and then we will be out of here. But I am so much in love with all that has been discussed. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Right after this, we continue the power investors. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift a collective of speakers mcs and moderators will shift your perspective meet our speakers for booking and interviews contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info dot at gmail.com you can also follow us on all social media channels at abscessnet global african season speakers network influencing the next generation of africans influencing the next generation of africans exactly what we stand to do and um, thank you so much dr mensa for giving us all these insightful tips on type 2 diabetes it's been a wonderful evening it's been a wonderful time and uh, if you're just joining us don't worry that's why it has the power of technology after the show you can go back and play the whole show and then pick the points that has been shared these are valuable points that hey, hey you wouldn't get it anywhere but on the power impact series so bob Bedin, who asked the question earlier that uh, that you answered is saying that mm -hmm. uh doc so period delivery it means one must involve a dietitian in our medical checkups he's asking is it is it is it part of the checkups when that you do on the six month row when you're going for the medical check you need to involve a dietitian in doing that checkup yes 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 it, it, excellent um bob Bede, now thank you for bringing that up you know i mentioned that your diet your exercise these are very key in reversing type 2 diabetes so you need to plan your meal i have a seven day meal plan for diabetics that i share with the patient some of the patients that i made and so i can even make that make that available for those who want but talk to a dietitian or a nutritionist so, so that the person can show you what to eat in the morning what to eat in the afternoon what to eat in the evening especially if you are already struggling with diabetes or you have a family member with diabetes and um ben mentioned from the beginning about pre-diabetes there are people who have pre-diabetes means that their sugar has started shooting up but they haven't been diagnosed with diabetes and so you need to start taking care of what you are eating what you are eating and it's very important to know how much slices of yam you can take together with your uh, steel tomato agushi how do you blend it and this will help you to to manage your heart perfectly 
And so, yes, you have to involve a dietitian in your medical checkup. When you go to talk to them, let them talk to you about your diet as well. It's very, very important. Right. It's very, very important. And Stephen said, I'm so happy to be listening to this discussion. And yeah, we are also happy because it's a wonderful discussion for us. Thank you so much. So we want to take the last words from Dr. He will share with us his uh, social media handles and uh, if there is any program he's about doing or working up for from now till the end of the year. He's going to share with us. So Dr. over to you. Excellent. Uh, uh, yes, so thank you. Uh, this has been fun. I, I love, I've loved sharing this information. I will definitely go back and watch it later and see how this went but thank you so much to to ben thank you to, uh, for the, being a wonderful host and thank you all those who joined us from south africa from from all over the world and um, those who are on facebook I'm, I'm seeing that people are sharing it on facebook thank you all very much but i had two things to live with you tomorrow go and check your blood sugar go and and tell a friend to tell a friend do you know your blood sugar when you meet them don't say good morning Ask them, do you know your blood sugar? <laughs> Tell them that Dr. Rudolph said that. Go and check your blood sugar. Please do that. Make sure you get your mom, your, your, your dad, your, your siblings to do that. Because if they don't do that and they fall sick, you are going to spend your money on that. So make sure they do that. And then plan towards discussing or learning more about your body, your diet, your, your drinks, and everything you do. So that you put yourself in a position to, to be healthy. You need to live stronger. Health is what if you are not strong and alive, if you are not healthy, you can't even you wouldn't have even been to join this discussion. And so I have a Google certified uh, page. Just type Rudolf Mesa in Google. You will see my name. You see an author as part of my designation. It will send you to the link to my my author page on Amazon. It will give you a link to my Twitter page, which is at Mesa Rudolf. Facebook Mesa Rudolf. Um, Instagram means it's the same. The handle is the same everywhere. You, I'm on TikTok with, with the same thing. Rudolph is inspired. I share a lot of inspiration and her tips there. I have a YouTube channel as well, Rudolph Mesa. Same Rudolph Mesa. You can check it out right after here. Those of you joining via YouTube or Facebook, you can you can do that. Yes, I, I think we have a hashtag in there. Know your diabetes status. I think that's that we do. You have to push it, Ben. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Thank you so Baden, thank you for that. And then thank you all for joining. It's been really wonderful. Okay, so what we normally do is that at the end of the day, we come up with a hashtag for this episode. And I'm sure Baden is eating and he's dropping. He's itching. We're going to add it to the, to, the, to the hashtag for today's episode. So it is about to drop now. We are about to drop now. Pa, all right. So we have a lot of hashtags today because it is all about it. So know your diabetes status one, and then check your blood sugar two. Yes. Less water, more H2O for our science student. H2O is water. water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, less soda, more water. So these are the hashtags for today's episode. It's wonderful. It's been a good time. And hey, he said it all. Check him on all his social media handles. It's the same person the same name throughout because you need to check your sugar or blood sugar levels so this week that is it for us all we're going to check our blood sugar levels and know where we are so thank you so much for joining us thank everyone for coming in thank you for commenting thank you for sharing your your ideas and thank you for the questions yeah we can we cannot stop sharing the link we can continue sharing the link and sharing it too all our friends will join us yes and for the tips for the day you can come and not, not get any tips from cyber security awareness yes today i'm going to share something with you on phishing links or phishing attack most of you do get a lot of messages those of us that are on whatsapp or even facebook or any of the social media handles you do get these messages that you own 60 gigabytes 50 gigabyte of data from a network um, the company that you need to click on this link and then you receive it or you want a shopping voucher from a popular shopping mart that you do your shopping from so click on this link and then redeem that uh, voucher for the shopping you know what the people are doing they've sent in that link it can be two links either a fishing link or a malicious link they're using the link the fishing link is going to harvest your personal information and then once you hit on that it's going to take you to a page where it's going to mimic 
a popular or a particular website or web page that you have been uh, working or you have been visiting then he's going to portray or pretend as if it's the original website that you have been dealing with and they're going to harvest your information and you know what that means they might take in your credentials they might take in your sensitive information and they're going to impersonate you and use it against you or use it to get in get assets into your online online account the malicious link on the other side are the dangerous ones or very very difficult ones when you click on it what it does it, it the sender or the one who sent it the hacker the bad guy all they are waiting for you to do is to click on that link and once you click on it they are hidden codes behind it and it's going to be executed once those those codes are executed they're going to open a back door to your device to your your device you're using and somebody sitting somewhere else remotely will have access to your device so you'll be co-hosting or cohabiting somebody on or in your device and you think that you are the only person using your device you're going to give access right to somebody sitting somewhere who can have access to your device so the next time you see those messages rolling and then spreading or just going all around your your social media handles remember that there's no need for you to click it you have no business clicking those links because once you click it you open yourself for the bad guys to get in there thank you so much for joining us for today's episode it has been a wonderful time it's been a beautiful time and all we want to say is thank you to dr rudolph mensa for availing himself to share with us this beautiful nuggets and also you for having the time to be with us on this episode to share and listen to what doctor shared with us as i always say dreams are in levels make sure you get to the top level of your dream on behalf of the african season speakers network and the power in our series team all we want to say is this we want to thank you for joining us for this episode have a wonderful week and hey don't forget this week less water no less soda more water know your blood sugar level thank you so much have a wonderful week